Kitty Hawk is one of the oldest towns on the Outer Banks. Long before the Wright brothers shared Addie and Bill Tate's home on Moore Shore Road, there was a small but thriving community spread around the shores of Kitty Hawk Bay. Very few people know Kitty Hawk as well as Cliff Perry. I'm Clifton Perry. I was born and raised in Kitty Hawk, born in 1936, and I have been the, uh, the mayor and town council for 26 years in Kitty Hawk. Up Road and Down Road is what used to be Otilla in the Up the Road, and uh, Kitty Hawk was Down the Road, had two post offices. It was divided in two different towns, and sometime uh, when the schoolhouse was built, or sometime it was incorporated and became Kitty Hawk. When I was a kid, uh, this was sort of the hub of Kitty Hawk. To you right over here, there was a, a country store and in that store was also a post office, the Kitty Hawk Post Office. The same way they got supplies at the end of Kitty Hawk Road, they had a long pier right there, and tugboat from Elizabeth City came and bought supplies and mail and delivered it to Otilla Post Office. And then they came around through Kitty Hawk Bay, and there was a long pier uh, at the end of Lodge Baum Road, and that's where the tugboat tied up. They had to be way out there because it's a high shoal. And then in 1944, there came a bad storm and tore up the pier at the end of Baum Road. My daddy had a fish house down there and he had his fishing supplies, but he used to take the Wright brothers in a skiff sometime down to where they went ashore uh, to fly the airplane. And uh, he pulled them down there and back at different times. Other people did also. And the day that they flew, they asked him, don't you want to go with us? He said, no, I'm going fishing. My daddy never owned a car. In a horse and cart, my mother used to deliver the milk while he was fishing. We milked cows. Uh, in the stores, it was just a few canned goods, and it, it was no loaf bread or anything like that in those days. And uh, it was flour and uh, salt pork and meat you could buy from the store. Some of it was locally stuff that was killed and, and sold here. And uh, my daddy also uh, killed, had a lot of beefy. I think he had 81 head of cattle at one time. And the cattle were allowed to run loose until they put the bridge across and then they passed a no fence law. You had to fence up your cattle. And uh, that was kind of the life of Kitty Hawk. It was fish and wildlife that you killed, squirrels and raccoons and ducks and geese. And that was Kitty Hawk. I mean, we didn't buy much stuff. Beginning in 1942, the Outer Banks was on the front line of World War II as German U-boats prowled offshore, taking a horrific toll on Allied shipping. Okay, now we're approaching uh, on the top of the hill at what we call Army Camp Hill. Yep. And on both sides, it was barracks for the uh, men to live in. And on the left side was a big tower with a, a big scope that looked for submarines offshore. Uh, one thing about World War II was that you had to have your blinds dark so that at night no light shine would shine out. And so Edgar Perry, who was the game warden at the time, he also had a deal with Army that he would go around through the neighborhood and check lights at night. If he found, saw a light through your windows, he'd come knock on the door and tell you how to secure your lights. Behind me is the Kitty Hawk United Methodist Church, been here for years. And I remember when it was just a wooden church and uh, high steps in the front. And at that time, I got married in 1954. And that's where I was married. I have a picture of my wife and I standing on the steps. So our last stop today is the Kitty Hawk School, which was incorporated with the Up the Road School and the Down the Road School and became what is known as the Kitty Hawk School. That's where I went to school and also for the kids all the way from Cavis Inlet to down to Nags Head I came to this school. This is about the location somewhere in this area where Otilla was to my right and, and Kitty Hawk was to my left and somewhere in this area is where that division was. Cliff Perry graduated from Kitty Hawk School in 1955, well after the Otilla Post Office closed up shop and the village became stuff of legend. By the 1950s, roads were improving and people were discovering life by the sea. Change was coming to the village of Kitty Hawk, but some things have never changed. The sense of community, family, and history 
that was so much a part of Kitty Hawk life when Cliff was growing up is still what makes the town a special place.